Praise the Lord, Community Family Church. Praise the Lord, let's all stand in God's house tonight. So grateful to see you. Hallelujah. Give me the key of A flat, please. Oh, I'm free. Praise the Lord, I'm free. No longer bound. No more chains holding me. My soul is resting. And oh, what a blessing. Oh, praise the Lord. Hallelujah, I'm free. Come on, it's one choir. Let's sing together. Oh, I'm free. Praise the Lord, I'm free. And no longer bound. No more chains are holding me. My soul is resting, yes it is, oh what a blessing, yeah, yeah. praise the Lord, hallelujah, one more time, let me hear you say, oh I To the Lord that I am free. You see, I've been saved and sanctified. I've been filled with this holy, holiness. And so I am resting. And it's such a wonderful blessing. How may I say now? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, let your mind go back. When Jesus saved your soul and say, Oh, I'm free. Yes, I am. Praise the Lord, I'm free. And no longer bound. No longer bound. No more chains are holding no me. Chains holding no me. more My chains are holding me. No more chains are holding me. It's such a blessing. and say praise the Lord hallelujah, hallelujah. I'm free. yes I'm free I've got to say praise the Lord praise the Lord hallelujah magnify the I'm Lord with free. me let's see so let's sing together say praise the Lord hallelujah hallelujah I'm free I'm going to have a water baptism. It's a representation of the death, the burial, and the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. These people who are baptized tonight are saying Jesus is Lord of their lives. They've been saved. They've been redeemed. They've been set free. And it's a declaration of their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. So as they prepare, can we just pray right now and ask God's hand upon this water baptism ceremony right now. God, we thank you, Jesus, for what you've done in this house. We thank you for all the lives who have been saved, who have been changed, who have been delivered. And tonight, Lord, as we reflect, Lord, we reflect on how great and mighty you are, how you reach down your hand. Your hand is not too short that you cannot save, nor is your ear deaf that you cannot hear, but your eyes are on the righteous and your ears are open to their cries. God, thank you that you reached down way down for us, God, and brought us out. I thank you, God, for all the deliverances, Lord, that you brought us through, Jesus. We give you praise and glory in Jesus' name. And the church says, come on, clap your hands all across this place tonight. And you may be seated.
We have here Melanie Rutherford wants to thank God so much for all the blessings we have received in her life and wants to say thank God for delivering me from any self-doubt and confusion and thank you for forgiving me of my sins. Amen. And oh, what a blessing. I want to say praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I am free. Yeah. Scott, he would like to thank God tonight and he'd like to testify for his saving grace and his mercy in his life. I would just like to thank Jesus for all that he's done in my life. The older you get, the more you realize it. Amen. Hallelujah, I'm free. Oh yeah, oh, I'm free. Praise the Lord, I'm free. I've been saved and sanctified. This is Colton. He said he'd like to thank God for his grace, his mercy, his everlasting love for his son, Jesus Christ, and thank God for delivering me from my sins. I say, praise the Lord, hallelujah, I'm free. Yes, I'm Oh, I am free. Praise the Lord, I'm free. This is Boaz. He would like to thank God for sending his son to die on the cross for my sins. And God has delivered me from lying and disobeying my parents. Yeah, yeah, yes, I say. Praise the Lord, hallelujah, I'm free. Oh, I'm free. Yes, I am. Praise the Lord, I am free. No longer bound. No more chains are holding me. This is Sarah. She would like to thank God for remembering her that I remember coming back to CFC on September 26th, praying to be where I am today, and I've never felt so much joy in all my life. God has delivered me from depression, from anxiety, from associating with Wiccans, and I'm so grateful that He has brought me from suicidal thoughts and has given me a new heart. No longer bow, no, no. Say, praise the Lord, hallelujah. This is Reed. You'd like to thank God for his family, everything that he's brought me and my family from, and he's delivered me from my problems, and that he'd like to testify tonight, too. I just want to thank God for everything he's done for me and all my family. I hope he just keeps his looking down over us as we go on in life, and I just want him to bless us as we keep going. Amen. Amen. Soul is resting, yeah. Oh, what a blessing it is, I say. Praise the Lord, hallelujah. Yeah, yes, I am free, yes, I am. Praise the Lord. This is Adam. He'd like to thank God for everything. And thank God for his guidance in making me a better man. I'd like to thank God, of course, for delivering me from everything the enemy has tried to come in my way. And I know that his blood still works. I say praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I've been set free. I'm free. Praise the Lord. I'm free. Yes, no longer found. Let's all stand in God's house tonight. No more chains are holding me. My soul is resting.
resting. Oh, what a blessing. Come on, it's one choir. Let's say that. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I want to say praise the Lord. Yeah. I know that I know that I know I'm free. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm free. Come on and clap your hands all across this place and shout unto God. Yes. Hallelujah, the presence of the Lord is here. The presence of the Lord is here. I can feel him in the atmosphere. Yeah. The presence of the Lord is here. The presence of the Lord is here. And the Spirit of the Lord is here. The Spirit of the Lord is here. I can feel him when I walk right into the room. Yes, I could. The Spirit of the Lord is here. The Spirit of the Lord is here. And the power of the Lord is here. The power of the Lord is here. Oh, that I can feel him and the eye I say the power of the Lord is here. The power of the Lord is here. You want to join tonight? Let's sing. The presence of the Lord is here. The presence of the Lord is here. I can feel the man in the atmosphere. The presence of the Lord is here. The presence of the Lord is here. The spirit of the Lord is here. When I walked in the room, I felt the spirit of the Lord.
bless you. A blessing from the Lord is here. I said a blessing from the Lord. He loves to bless his people. I feel it in the atmosphere. Blessing from the Lord is here.
Shout! Hallelujah! 
God. Praise God. I believe, I believe some of you were listening to that preaching this morning. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Serve the Lord with gladness. Thank you, Jesus. Brother Robbie Grubbs and Kira are taking, a, are taking a group or going by yourself? Just then, they're going to the Philippines to minister to a youth conference of hundreds, probably up in the thousands. 3,000? So I want those to come out. If Robbie and Kira would come out. And I've got so much to be thankful for. You know, I, I, I didn't even know that Melanie and Scott were getting baptized. My cousins... And then Colton, I didn't know he was getting baptized. And I remember when he was probably 18, 17, 18, had an accident just like Daniel Cahill. And we prayed and prayed for Daniel. It's the same kind. And he was paralyzed. And, uh, and we began to pray. And God turned that thing around. Colton, you got two hands to clap. When you came out of that water, you threw your hands up. You had two hands to raise. Thank you, Jesus. I want you to stretch your hands this way. This is our a young missionary in our church and his wife and you watching by internet. They're going to be ministering to about 3,000 in the Philippines. Father, in the name of Jesus, we surround them with prayers, Lord. Let them be covered. Oh, bless your name. Bless your name. In the name of Jesus, go before them. Go before them, paving the way. Pave the way before him, Jesus. We will give you all of the praise and all of the glory. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God, we love you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Let's give God a great praise. Before you're seated, I know you're, we got them all the way up, all through the balcony, but find you somebody you know, somebody you don't know, somebody you're wondering who they are. And you don't have to shake hands if you don't want to spread. Who knows, you might spread some joy. Praise God. But give them a smile. Tell them you're glad to see them in the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Can we just give God a great praise, a great clap of the hands tonight for all he's done. Amen. He's a great God and he's greatly to be praised. That last song. Change, I change my mind, Caleb. You know, if there's any of you young people, we did this at the 9 o'clock and I didn't have time at 1045, but we want to thank all of those who sacrifice. It's a sacrifice. I want to tell you something. The people who love you have sacrificed for you all your life. If something happens to you and you walk away from the Father's house and you end up in the pig's pen, it's not going to get it. You're not going to get any help from the other people. They'll leave you there. But it's those who sacrificed kids' camp, children's camp, children's church to bring you where you are. And if God did something in your heart, we don't have time for you to tell. Most young people don't do that. <laughs> it's the other ones we have to worry about. They say, well, it all started in 1952, and I'd about to start sinking. <laughs> but since they don't have that long of a space of time, I want you to come up here real quickly and uh, tell us. 
I'm gonna count to three. If you're not up by then, you didn't get, you didn't have enough of it to get you up. One, two, three. Praise God. We already heard from your brother, Colton. Already heard from Colton. Come on, tell us what happened to you. Hi, I'm Clay. Um, I saw, it was uh, Psalms 34, 8. Basically, taste and see that the Lord is good. And I saw that all throughout IYC on Friday. Just kids with chains of depression, chains of anxiety, just melting off of them. And they were crumbling under the presence of God and the love that they felt. And I felt in myself, because I walked in to IYC 2022, I was a drunk, I was an addict, and way more nicotine addict, and everything fell off of me then. So I saw that the parents, your guys' prayers, I saw parents crying behind their kids. And it was just an amazing time, and it was amazing to soak in the presence of God. Um, I missed the opportunity to do it after the nine, and it was eating me up, and I'm thankful for the opportunity to do it now. But um, in Psalms 124, it says, let Israel now say, if it had not been for the Lord, men would have swollen me alive. And I wanna thank God when I ran away, when I wasn't where I should have been. God kept me alive when I wasn't running for him, walking from her, even crawling. God carried me, God kept me alive, God got me there. And when at IYC, I went up there and God, and God moved in my heart, he changed my life. And I pray, Lord, that I walk how God's called me to walk and I pray for a change in my heart. And I believe that now I'm gonna have a fire and anointing that I've never had before and I'm gonna hold on like never before, and I'm just thankful for the change in my life. Praise the Lord. I want to share a quick testimony about IYC this year. I've been fortunate in my life to see God do absolutely amazing things. And one thing maybe you've never seen in your life is someone who's been delivered from demons. Now, you see it all through Scripture. But then in life, it's like, does that happen? But we've seen that happen here. I don't know if you've been around where someone has been delivered either through demonic oppression or demonic possession. There was a young lady who was 13 years old. Her name's Lyric. She was at our conference. She was there on Friday. But on Saturday morning, when Brother Jay Boyd was laying hands on people, he laid hands on her and, and passed over. But then something happened to her. She dropped to the ground and some other people from the church were helping pray and it seemed like, is this girl gonna be okay? because she was in the ground, started almost slithering around and making these sounds that were coming out of her. And we knew that she wanted free, but there was demonic activity that was either oppressing or possessing her. That was such a stronghold. Some people were asking me, what do we do? And I said, we, we gotta pray and seek the face of God and, and cast this devil out that's oppressing her or possessing her. Now, I've, I don't know if you've ever seen that happen before, but sometimes there's actually a physical manifestation that comes out of people before. And that has happened here, and I've seen that before, but this, I didn't know if, what, if that would happen. And this young lady, she kept on grabbing for her neck, and she kept on pulling her clothes, and kept on moving around, and we were trying our best to contain her, but yet say, you know, proclaim victory in the name of Jesus. And at that time, I'll just tell you the God's honest truth would happen. I'm not for sure why this happens sometimes, but sometimes there's a physical thing that will come out of their mouth. And it did, it came out of her mouth. We, we it had to clean her up, but she got up, 13 years old, completely <laughs> delivered from demonic possession. Got up, got the microphone, and testified that Jesus has set her free. And I want to thank God for people like Sister Cindy Cooper, who 30 years ago decided that she would have a youth conference at Community Family Church because she believed there was a generation that was going to raise up and do mighty works in the kingdom of God. And because what she planted 30 years ago, this girl, 13 years old, got a deliverance from demonic possession. I say, let God arise and all. Someone shall all, and all of his enemies be scattered. Can we give God praise tonight that there's deliverance in the name of Jesus? Go ahead and praise God like he was your 13-year-old who was delivered. Go ahead and praise God like he was your 13-year-old neighbor. Go ahead and praise God tonight that someone who was bound is
is now free by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Come on, give God a great praise tonight. Come on, he still does it, amen. He still does his thing, amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. You may be seated this afternoon. Glory to God. I was talking to Sister Cindy this morning and I asked her, I said, did you watch any of conference? And of course, the answer was yes. She doesn't miss any. But she told me, she said, what God plants stays. And she, her and Brother Ken Cooper started that youth conference because it was birthed out of God. It was his heart for this generation. And if it's God's idea, it stays. Amen. Man can't uproot it. Amen. Praise God. But so excited to worship with you tonight. God has been doing incredible things all day. Incredible altar services. It has just Thank been a you, wonderful Jesus. time. I don't want to interrupt you again, but <laughs> no, for sure. I don't want to miss it. Josh was talking about the demonic power. And I felt the enemy get weak when he was telling it. I felt, the, I felt the enemy get weak. I felt him get very weak. Am I not the God who still delivers from demonic oppression? I am here to lift the heavy heart. I am here to cast out devils. I am here to heal the sick. Run to the altar now, for I am here in power, says the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Shauna, I remember that first attack of that, that the cancer was manifest as an evil spirit, not in you, but attached to your body. And I remember I was standing up there when Joshua was telling that story, you could feel the enemy getting weak, actually getting a little terrified because the Shulamite bride is not the great whore. She is not the mother of harlots. She don't have her foot sticking in the world and sticking trying to keep it in the church. And Shauna was under a first attack and she's under another attack. But the first attack, and when he told that, man, I was just coming all over me. Now we got a verification by the Holy Ghost. And I saw... And I don't normally see things like this. I don't know if I've ever seen it in my life. It looked like a monkey and a groundhog with a face almost like a man, a little bitty creature about that tall. And on the side of her body where that cancer was attacking her, it was grabbed a hold of her almost like a koala bear. It was evil. And in that service, the enemy got weak, just like I feel him right now. Somebody said, how do you know the enemy is getting weak? Because I feel something in me getting strong. Yeah. Two can't occupy the same room. Two can't have authority in the same house. Two cannot have dominion in the same quarters. And I felt that power getting weak because I felt something inside of me getting strong. And that night, I didn't know what to say, but I finally said it. I said, I see this thing attached to your body. And I said, in the name of Jesus, and there was such faith, not for healing, but over demonic powers, which is the source behind every evil thing. And when we begin to move under this authority of faith and power, that thing leaped off of her, went running out the door. Now this is really strange, but there were people that weren't in here. They were outside getting ready to open the door, but when they opened the door, there was such a gush that came through the door, it pushed them back. And they turned around and said, what was that? And they said, what was what? Said, didn't you know that? I went to open the door, but the door pushed open on itself. And there was something came out of here. They never knew what was going on until they came back in the house. 
And I want you to know tonight, Sister Shauna, I don't understand healing, but I do understand deliverance. I do understand that God delivers from anxiety. He delivers from fear. He delivers from oppression. Even though sickness is trying to attach itself to you, you don't have to have the other stuff that goes with it. And in the name of Jesus, I heard the Holy Ghost. If you are battling any form of demonic activity or oppression, the Spirit of God said, run to this altar. Just get up here as quick as possible. I want the elders and minister to jump up, get after them. And just for the next few minutes, we're going to take authority. And I want some of you here to gather around Shauna. And I command that spirit of oppression, Ishaya, no kodorobosaya, in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, it's, it's going tonight. I said it's going right now. It's going right now. Come on, church. You don't have to have a song, but I need a praise. I need faith to lift up high. Come on, get that faith as high as you can get it. Get that faith as high as you can get it. Suicide, sickness, demonic activity, any type of power of darkness. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, in the name of the Lord God Almighty, demonic powers of drugs. Folks, deliverance is happening right now. Come on, keep on praying. Keep on praising. Keep on praying. Drugs, addictions, addictions, perversions. I command every demonic spirit, I command every demonic power to release these children of God in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, help me pray, oh, Lord. Come on, hallelujah, just help me call on the Lord. Joshua shout. He said it is gone. This don't take all night long. It is gone. It is gone. It is gone. It is gone. Haya Bahaya. It is gone. It is gone. We love you, Jesus.
victory, 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 victory. Come on, clap your hands and shout victory, 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 victory. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. One more time. Clap your hands and shout unto the Lord. Listen to me tonight. The devil cannot take your free will. There was a man in the Bible who was possessed with thousands of devils. His name was Legion. But the moment that he made up his mind that he wanted to be set free, the devil had to leave him. Amen. If you're in this altar right now, make up your mind. It doesn't matter how possessed I am. It doesn't matter how many demons I choose to be free in Jesus' name. Go ahead, worship team. If you're praying, tell Jesus right now, by the blood of the Lamb, by the name of Jesus, I choose freedom. I will not be bound, but I will be free in Jesus' name. the tambourines and cymbals for just a real quick song there's been too much victory in this house victory over drugs victory over addiction victory over fear victory over bad things hallelujah but God has given us victory I said he's given us victory tonight in the name of Jesus hallelujah oh the enemy's always watching waiting for me to fall but I come through the valley in the shadow of death. I fear no evil at all. I've got victory over the enemy. And the world can't do me no harm. I've got victory over the enemy. And the world can't do me no harm.
just thank him tonight. There's a lot from my past I didn't realize still still held on to. He was loose tonight. He healed my boy of epilepsy. But there's still a lot of my past I didn't realize I still had on me. I'm letting it go. In the name of Jesus, I'm letting it go. For good. No more. I'm kicking all that out of my house in the name of Jesus. It's going to be a different life. You did let it go. You let it go. Hallelujah. That anger, that anger that you've held for years, the anger, actually the anger was so bad if you could have got a hold of them, you'd have whooped them real good and maybe could have killed them. And I don't know who these people are, but I am going to tell you one thing. You don't have to hold on to it anymore. That anger is gone. No harm. As brother brother Caleb tries it one more time oh peace oh peace oh wonder for peace coming down from the fire God, this coming tomorrow, I'll be preaching and you watching tonight from all over the United States. If you're anywhere near Myrtle Beach, Ocean, uh, Ocean Isles, where am I going to be? No, I'm going to be in Myrtle Beach. Yeah, if you're anywhere near there, I'll be preaching at the Conway Church of God on Monday night for their annual meeting. I will be flying back on Tuesday and then Wednesday morning, Brother Eric, my son and I, We'll be flying to Baton Rouge for the resurrection camp meeting for Brother Jimmy Swagger and the Sun Life Broadcasting Network. Here on Wednesday night, we're leaving you in the hands of Brother Dean Brock and Sister Darla, and we're believing God's going to do wonderful things, incredible things. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we have all kinds of things ready for you. This coming week, Friday, you're going to have a special time because people like to honor. They like to honor the, the uh, passion of Christ, what he went through. And they will be doing that here Friday night. It won't be on the Internet. But it, and it's not going to be a good Friday service. It's going to be the Lord's Supper. It's going to be acknowledging that the blood of our Savior has purchased everything that's happened here tonight. And Shauna, I'm just believing you're gonna have a good week this week. <laughs> I'm believing that in Jesus' name. Brother Caleb, we appreciate you and Faith are so young, but I was young too. And we're so appreciative of how the team with Josh and Megan and everybody, all the workers, how they put this great conference together. And I know you've clapped and clapped and clapped, but it's good for your arms and your shoulders. 
And uh, one more time, let's give it up for all of those that worked in this youth conference. Amen. I love the Spirit of God. Amen. You just never know what's going to happen. Amen. Praise God. Just a few announcements tonight, but before we do that, we would like to welcome all of our first-time guests. So as a church family, one more time, can we put it together for all of our first-time guests worshiping with us this evening? Amen. We're so glad to have you. One of the best ways for you to get connected to here to what all that God is doing here at Community Family Church is to fill out that connection card on the back of the seat in front of you. Fill that, with, fill that out with your information, and during time of offering, you can drop those off in the offering bins, and we will get connected with you. And then the first Sunday of April, we're going to be starting up our next journey session. The journey is our connection experience. We want to make sure that you get plugged into God's vision, the, your gifts and callings, and make sure that you are operating in, in, in being involved with as much as you can here at Community Family Church because there are so many things going on and what God is doing in his kingdom. We want to make sure that you are a part of it. So make sure that you register and sign up for the next journey session starting the first Sunday of April. And then we've got Easter weekend coming up. Amen. How many loves Easter weekend? What a wonderful time. Amen. Starting this Thursday, Brother Mikey and Morgan Skaggs are going to be hosting an Easter outreach event. So if you would like to participate in a door knocking event, inviting people to church, showing them the love of God, making sure that they know that we have a great Easter service and we're going to be worshiping the resurrected Savior this Sunday. If you would like to participate for that outreach program, be at the church parking lot at 6 p.m. this Thursday, and they will give you the details there. And then the next day, Good Friday, we're going to be having our Good Friday and prayer and communion service at 7 p.m. And like Pastor said, it will not be live streamed, so make sure that you are here and in person as we worship and pray and get excited for all that God is going to be doing. And then the following day, that Saturday from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m., we're going to be having our CFC Kids Ministry Easter Live event in the gymnasium. So make sure that you come out and support your kids and our church children as they put on this wonderful event. It's going to be a great time. And then Easter Sunday at the 9, 10, 45, 12, 30, and the 6 p.m. service, we're going to be having uh, our Easter services. So make sure to invite everyone that you know. We have wonderful Easter service invitation cards to all that we've got going on this weekend at the guest services desk. Make sure you pick those up, put them in a door, go door knocking, go to the outreach because this is such a good time to evangelize. Amen. Amen. We're going to go ahead and take up our offering tonight, but before we do, just a few ways you can give. If you are texting give, if you are texting to give, you can text the word give to 859-359-3997 and designate your offering that way. Or if you're in person and would like to write a check or cash in an envelope, you can make that check payable to CFC and drop those off during our time of offering. Or if you would like to mail cash or a check, you can mail that to 11875 Taylor Mill Road, Independence, Kentucky, 41051. Amen. How many is ready to give tonight? Amen. Let's go ahead and say our offering declaration as a church family tonight. As we bring in today's tithes, offerings, and over and above giving, we are believing the Lord for a supernatural release of God's favor over every area of our lives. Jobs and better jobs, checks in the mail, inheritances, secure investments, scholarships, creative ideas, finding money, healing for our spirit, soul, and body, deliverance to the captive, salvation to the lost, and an outpouring of the Holy Ghost. Say this next part in faith, that we are blessed and we will be a blessing to others. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, Let's go before the Lord in prayer together tonight. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the victory that we have in the cross. Lord, we thank you for what you did for us on Calvary. And God, we thank you, Lord, for all that you're going to do at the end of this service. But God, we, we pray that you would bless the seed and the sower as they give tonight. And God, we pray, Lord, that you would use this offering to further your kingdom for the gospel's sake. 
God, we pray that you would use Robbie and Kira to evangelize the nation of the Philippines. And God, we pray for a mighty outpouring of your spirit as they go. And God, we'll never fail to give you all of the praise and all of the glory. And in the mighty, matchless name of Jesus, the church says, amen and amen. Please stand and worship as you give tonight. Some seek for wealth down here And some look for fame But I look for Jesus With Him I'll reign I'm just a pilgrim here But soon I'll be gone Cause nothing can hold me here I'm headed home I said nothing can hold me here I'm headed home
Praise God. I think you can be seated. I think I can preach in about 15 minutes, but before I do, Brother Nathan, come on up. Come on up and testify. He's from the Appalachian Mountains. You'll figure it out when he starts talking. <laughs> we were in Guatemala, and they, they, they said, uh, what, what does he speak? I said, he speaks Grundy. <laughs> from Grundy, Virginia. And we're so glad to have Nathaniel with us. He was at the youth conference for the first time and enjoyed it, and we just want him to testify tonight. I'm thankful for everything the Lord does. Thankful to be back in the house of God. I love to be in the house of God. It never gets old to me. It never gets old to be in the presence of a king. It's different. It's new every day when I wake up. It gets sweeter and sweeter each and every day. Because I serve a God that's alive, and I serve a God that can take me through all of my problems, all of my situations, can give deliverance to the captive, can save the lost soul, can heal my body, and can cast out demons and do all things through Christ who strengthens us. I serve a risen Savior today, and I'm thankful that I serve a risen Savior. Are you thankful that you serve a risen Savior? Are you thankful that He can do deliverance to you? Are you thankful that He can heal your body? Is it new to you every day that you walk in the house of God? Or is it the same old thing, but I think it can be new to you today? Because God is alive and He's well, and I get to praise Him. I get to see what He wants to have to offer me today and forevermore. He's good to me. Is He good to you? Is He worth shouting about? Is He worth singing about? Is He worth coming to God about? Is it worth coming to, to, to service three times on Sunday or whatever you come to service? Is He worth it to you? Because he is to me. Hallelujah. He deserves a bigger hand clap of praise than that. He's been good to us. He's been good. He's been better than good to us. All the blessings of the Lord, I'm thankful for them. I'm thankful. I'm, I'm going to just say a little bit about something I said this morning about that when we went down to Guatemala, seeing something to realize that I was just how blessed I really am, is when we was down there, we go to the churches and things and they have no air condition or no heating or anything like that and have no windows in most of them, right, correctly? No windows or anything like that and you don't sit on pews or you don't sit on chairs like y'all are on, like padded chairs or things like that. No, you sit on little um, um, plastic chairs that they put out for you. And something that made me realize is just how blessed I am to grow up in a country where I can come to the house of God and there's air condition here and I've got a vehicle to drive here and everything else and I can come and I can sit down and my seat is at least a little bit comfortable. I'm blessed beyond measure. I'm blessed when I wake up of the morning. I'm blessed when I lay my head down to rest. I'm blessed when I come to service. And I'm blessed when I leave. Because when I leave, every single time that I leave the house of God, there's something that happens to me. There's something different about me because I get a renewal of God's spirit down on the inside of me. If you're not the same way, then you need to get into service and let God take over today. Praise the Lord. All of you watching by internet, we named 86 names at the 1045 service that have joined on board to help us build the new sanctuary. We now have 2,540 families on board and our new pathway to the three million, which is just a little segment, we was trying to get this thing under roof. We are believing God put it under roof debt free. Is it two million eighty nine thousand eight hundred forty five thousand and forty five? I mean eight hundred forty five dollars and forty five cents. And so we're giving God praise for that. I'm going to talk more to you on the our internet family after church. Well, not after church when after we get finished preaching. But we had new partners, which is amazing, because I'm no longer on uh, Daystar Network, and a lot of the networks, I'm not on them. And, but we thank, so thankful, and Love's Park 
Illinois, we have Arthur, Indianapolis, Indiana, Darla, Gray, Louisiana, Brian, Stanton, Kentucky, Kathy, Woodlawn, Virginia, Bob and Dee, Monroe, Michigan, Barbara, Oshkosh, Wisconsin, Carolyn, Eager, uh, Arizona, Stan and Debbie, and Moxville, North Carolina, Peggy. So we're thanking God for our new partners. And I gave you information I really need to clarify. Since we have started this building, I said since June, I only ask, I only ask for the records from June the 1st. So I was wrong on that. But uh, it's still pretty close. We will, by the time we put this under roof, counting all of our, what we budgeted and everything, we will have put in close to five million or over five million. We don't know where those numbers will be. And I really didn't know how blue the blue collar was until I asked for, because in the June, I started singing that song. I, I wasn't singing it. I wasn't singing it because I didn't, you know, thought, thought it was just for me. But Floyd Lahan has gone on to meet the Lord. He said, when you started singing that, something supernatural was released in my home. And he, along with other people who walk in the Spirit, they said, something supernatural is released when you sing that song. So before I preach, we're going to do just a course of that song again, 10,000 give a thousand. Because... From the records from June the 1st till now, I thought there'd be at least three to 4,000 that have given 1,000. But it's only since June the 1st, 713. The largest check we have received is from a business that's 50,000. This is a miracle like none other to think no one that I know of has ever seen five million come in in fives, tens, and twenties. And we've been able to because of the tithes. This church is such a tithe paying church. They're believers in the Bible, that's why they pay tithes. You know, I was told, they said, you're gonna have to change your method. I said the principles stay the same, but the methods change. But this generation doesn't give because the Bible says give. This generation will only give if you tell them what their investment is because they've been trained to make investments. They've been trained to make investments and I, they didn't say this, but in my mind they, I said they've been trained to make investments but not follow obedience to the Bible. But I never changed. I don't have any tricks. We don't come in here with some type of a format trying to trick you into giving to God. You have to do that between you and God. And I'm telling you, when they came in and did an evaluation of this church, they said, you are so far above the American standard. Your people, we don't have, we don't have people can write $100,000, $200,000 checks. We don't have people that can just write half a million or a million. They're not in this congregation at this present time. They're out there and we're believing that God's gonna move up on them because we really desperately need this, this new building. And on Easter Sunday, if you think you can convince several members of your family, you know the 1230 service is so dynamic and I'm not saying that trying to sell you on something because most of your families don't want to get up out of bed in the first place. So you might as well work around their schedule and say, we'll go out to eat or I'll fix a big breakfast and we'll all go to church at the 1230. But we have an opportunity at this 1230 service for you to bring 40 of your family members and them all be able to have a seat. And I think that's wonderful. I think it's worth trying. I've heard people, and I've thought it myself, why are you putting your 68-year-old body 
through all of this stress? Well, first of all, seems like when I'm preaching, I'm not under any stress at all. That don't seem to be the problem. But I know in a sanctuary as big as we're building, we want to walk in there with a full house. And the only way to do it, the only way to do it is to build up the 1230 service. And uh, that's how we can do it because it's like starting all over. God has blessed us. We have people saved. We have them delivered. But we've only got a few more months because when that building's built, we won't have a 1230 anymore because we can accommodate everyone in one service. So this is something you can invite your family starts at 12.30, it's usually over at 12.40, 12.45. It's a wonderful service, same music, same preaching, except for sometimes I really get, really get something else comes out. And it's gonna be a wonderful time. Let's all stand together. We're going to sing this chorus, then I'm gonna read the scripture. And if you'll, if you'll just hang with me, I think I can preach this in maybe 15 minutes. I said think. I never said no. And uh, we're going to believe that supernaturally that God is going to touch somebody. I thank God for the fives, tens, and twenties, and hundreds. Because of your faithful tithing, I'm not going to tell you the amount, but it's a large amount. We're able to put in the building funds. Somebody said, well, where in the world's all that money coming from? Fives, tens, twenties, and hundreds. It's coming from the bluest blue collar you can find. God is blessing us. And because your ties have increased, that means you must be increasing. You must be increasing. Evidently, you've got more shoes in your closet than you can wear. And if that be the case, God is blessing you. And we're taking that blessing and putting it over into the building fund when we reach a certain amount. Tommy Bates Ministries with our partners, I already told you this. I have a lot of widows only can give at the maximum $25 a month. That's what lets them be a partner. Elderly in their late 80s and early 90s can only give $25 a month. But because everybody given a little, in January, Tommy Bates Ministries could take $200,000 and put it in the building fund. And it makes... And when I go out and preach, all those little widows said, I got to be a part of that building fund because of their faithful giving. But I want us to sing this, and when we do, we're going to believe there will be a supernatural presence of God that is going to go through this house, into that camera, all across the world. And, and God's going to move. Let's sing it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And give a thousand for the building of the Lord. Ten thousand give a thousand for the building of the Lord. A house of peace and a bread, salvation free. God's love to share. This is Palm Sunday. Get those palms up. Hallelujah. Hosanna in the highest for this we give you praise. Hosanna in the
12, verses 22 through 24. And praise God, Adam, we're so glad that you prayed through, got baptized tonight. This is one of my cousins from down in Corbin. And he drove up here for this. And you got to drive home tonight, right? Or maybe. <laughs> but we're thanking God for that. Hallelujah. But ye are come unto Mount Zion and unto the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to an innumerable company of angels, to the general assembly and church of the firstborn which are written in heaven, and to God, the judge of all, and to the spirits of just men made perfect, and to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling that speaks of better things than that of Abel. Just for a few moments tonight, we're dealing with the subject, angels watching over me. Father, in the name of Jesus, let this word be preached with love, mercy, compassion, demonstration, and power of the Spirit in Jesus' name. Let the church say, Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Get your clocks on. Time me. Thank you, Jesus. We're preaching tonight on angels watching over me. Our text is found in Hebrews chapter 12, verses 20 through 22 through 24. When you get to the Old Covenant, angels are mentioned in this Bible from Genesis to the book of Revelation. You can't read this Bible and not bump into an angel. They're saturated in here. It was angels that... When Abraham interceded for his nephew Lot that went down into the wicked city of Sodom and Gomorrah, God sent angels to rescue, which tells us this. When you pray for your loved ones, angels are released. Angels were released on Colton. Angels were released on Adam. You don't know where they are, but they're there. It's according to the Bible. Angels according to angels ascending and descending upon Jacob as he's having this dream. And he said, this is Bethel, the house of God. So the Bible defines the house of God not as a Catholic, not as a Protestant, not as a Baptist, not as a holiness or a Pentecostal or a Church of God, Assembly of God, a Nazarene, First Baptist, Second Baptist, Free Will Baptist, Separate Baptist, Northern Baptist. <laughs> He defines the house of God where angels are ascending and descending, where something from heaven is touching earth. That's why it's very important. It's very important that we understand that God's serious about us coming to the house of God. It's not an entertainment center. It's not a showcase cinema. It's not here to see the finest talent in the greatest show. This is not the place for the greatest show on earth. You should be aware of more than all of those things. That somewhere, angels are ascending and descending. Whew. I'd like for one to just fall on me. Glory to God. Hallelujah. When Elijah was running from that old wicked Jezebel and was hiding under a juniper tree, an angel fixed him an angel food cake. And the Bible said angel food cake's a lot better than natural food because he went on the strength of it for 40 days. And I'm telling you what, if I eat Chinese, it's gone in two hours. If I eat fish, it's gone in three hours. If I eat pork, it's gone to about three and a half. If I eat a big juicy steak, it might last till the evening. Who knows? But angel food cake will take you a long time. The Bible said when Elisha the prophet said, I'm by myself. I don't know what I'm going to do. In 2 Kings chapter 6, God opened up his eyes. He saw chariots of fire and saw so many angels, he didn't know what to do with them. Hallelujah. When Daniel was placed in the lion's den, it was an angel that locked the jaws of a lion. Hallelujah. 
And if you're having trouble with jaws in your house and in your family, if the jaws of the lion won't shut their mouth, just ask God to send an angel down. If he can take care of Daniel's jawed lions, he can take care of yours. The Assyrian army came against Hezekiah and the Assyrians were terrible. They were the meanest, cruelest warriors there were. They, used, they would take the elderly man or the men old enough, you know, 40s and 50s, they would take them, cut their heads off and stack their heads up and make pyramids out of them. They would do that in the city. And when you walked in the city, you'd see their heads there. They would take the handsome young man or ugly young man. It didn't make any difference. Those who were able to fight in the battle, they'd bore a hole through their jaw and they would strip them naked and run a rope through their jaw and they would bring them down the street as if they were bringing an animal in. They would do horrible things to the women. Then they would kill the male children and use the female children as their concubines and as for their sexual pleasures. The Bible said that there was an army gathered around Jerusalem and they were gonna siege it. They were gonna take it. But Hezekiah went into the house of God. He took the letter that the enemy had written and he laid it on the altar. And he said, God, I need an answer to prayer. The Lord sent one angel. And when he got up that morning, there was 185,000 dead soldiers right outside the door. I said, I got angels. All night, all day angels watching over me my lord all night all day angels watching over me in the life of jesus luke 1 26 angels read his conception Angels spoke to Joseph and said, name him Jesus. Angels announced to the shepherds. And when they did, the angels sang hallelujah. The angel told Mary and Joseph, take this child into Egypt. Angels are the ones that when Jesus was in the wilderness under great temptation, that the angels came when he was faint and weary and began to minister to him. And when you get faint and weary, thank God for your grandma, thank God for your grandpa, thank God for the preacher, thank God for the elders in the church. But I'm telling you, you might not know where that touch comes from, but there's an angel that'll come down in the middle of your trouble, in the middle of your trouble. I said, oh, now. Night. All day, angels watching me, my Lord, all night, all day, those angels are watching over me. There were angels that came to Jesus when he was in the garden of Gethsemane when he began to pray until the capillaries in his head burst and he began to sweat great drops of blood. There was an angel that rolled away the stone when Jesus resurrected. There was an angel standing there at the Mount of Ascension when Jesus ascended into heaven. What did Jesus have to say about angels? Jesus told Nathaniel. He said, Nathaniel, from this day forward, you're going to see angels ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. What did Jesus say about angels? He said, I want you to know something. I know my passion. I know they're going to put nails in my hands. I know they're going to put spikes in my feet. But I can call 12 legion, thousands of angels, and they would come and rescue me. What did Jesus say about angels? He said, angels. Angels are the ones that carry you into the presence of God. Whenever you leave this world, your body fades. The death rattles come into your chest. But it is the angels that are standing at your bedside. Jesus said angels will carry you into the presence of God. What did Jesus say about angels? He said little children have guardian angels over them. You tell your children. They've got an angel going with them to school. They've got an angel going with them no matter where they... Oh! 
night all day angels watching help me preach oh all night all day i said angels watching over me hallelujah hallelujah jesus said angels do not have sexual relationships and I know I'm going to hit a lot of people's theories right now, but I'm going to do it just because I want to right now, if that's all right. I do not believe that angels have ever had sexual relationships with human beings. When the Bible said the sons of God, that were the sons of Seth. It's real simple. They were called the sons of God. It was the Sethites. They were the ones that was carrying the lineage of that one, that one seed in which all nations of the earth would be blessed. And I'm just going to leave it. You might say that's your theory. But Jesus said angels have no sexual relations and and they cannot die. Hallelujah. Well, well, what about in the book of Acts when the apostles were all thrown in prison? The angel opened up the prison doors and said, I never called you and anointed you for you to be locked up. I'm going to turn you loose. Hallelujah. It was an angel that directed Philip to go to the Ethiopian eunuch so he could go back and tell Candace, the one that Solomon was looking for, the one that the prophet we're looking for he has arrived his name is Jesus the Christ the son of the living God it was an angel when the church was praying in John Mark's mother's house and they were all locked up and terrified I don't even know what they were praying because James had already been beheaded they were probably saying Lord don't let Peter suffer don't let him suffer like James I don't know what they were praying all I can know is this that while they were praying angels went to the prison the angel smacked Peter on the side get up Simon put your clothes on I don't want you running out here like that I want you to put your shoes on you're going out of this place and when he came to John Mark's mother's house Rhoda came to the door and she said Simon is standing at the door they said honey you lost your mind he's in prison they were praying for him you may even pray wrong but angels know how to answer right I said they know how to answer right because I've got angels watching over me watching over me yeah yeah it was angels that directed Cornelius to Simon Peter and they were all baptized in the Holy Ghost and God poured out the Holy Ghost on the Gentiles. It was first the Italians, the pizza eating Italians that received the baptism in the Holy Ghost. Oh! what about in the book of Acts after they had not seen the sun nor the stars nor the moon and for 14 days it looked like every life was going to be taken away oh the apostle Paul said no we're not going anywhere because this night an angel stood by me in the midst of the storm well glory to God I've got angels watching over me I said I got angels watching over me and I want you tonight to expect angels the Bible said that they are encamped about those that fear his name that's what it says in Psalm Psalms 34 and 7. Do you know tonight in the realm of the spirit there's a glistening oh yes. <laughs> oh, <laughs> those Hollywood movie stars are trying to find who the aliens are. Well they're out there right now. They're guarding around this church. I don't know if their telescopes will pick them up or not. But there's something in the supernatural. It's angels that have encamped about this service. It is angels that caused Brother Adam to say I'm going to leave here free and another young man over here to say I'm going to leave here free and for a mother to say I'm going home tonight free and for somebody else to say I'm going home free there's angels all around us there's more for us than there are against us if God be for us who can be against 
Jesus. Child of God, you're not alone. You've got the Father in the Son. You've got the Son in the Father. You've got the Father in the Holy Ghost. And on top of that, you've got an innumerable company of angels that have encamped about you. Oh, hallelujah. And Robbie, Robbie, that prophecy you gave is only a prelude. When you get to the Philippines, you are going to cast many devils out. I said many devils because the angels are going before you. And the angels are going to be ascending and descending. Wherever you're at, whatever venue you're in, it's going to turn into the house of God. Because angels will ascend and angels will descend. Bless his name. Bless his name. Woo. It looks like my time has come and gone. Monday. I had to preach. I didn't have to. I was scheduled. Let's put it that way. I got an invitation. I got an invitation from Inglewood Baptist Church. Now, I didn't know how I forgot I just didn't put two and two together. I was preaching a Church of God conference and this young man came and after church was over, they had food for me. They always feeding me. And thank you. <laughs> and this young, young pastor was there. And they said, he's Baptist. <laughs> and then he come up and he said, well, I guess you heard I pastored the Baptist church. He said, but I've been filled with the, oh, I don't know if I'm supposed to tell it online. <laughs> Put it this way, his cup is running over. Hallelujah. <laughs> Big, beautiful Inglewood Baptist Church. But I didn't put the two and two together. And so Monday, here I am. Get up early, go to the airport. I'm not on Delta. I'm a million miler on Delta. I'm on American Airlines. So I go to American Airlines and I'm there early. I parked. Everything's just going great. And I'm telling you this to let you know. Angels watching over me. And I go up and she says, Oh, Mr. Bates, they've rescheduled you. I said, Really? She said, Yes. This particular flight is not going out. So they rescheduled you for 7 o'clock p.m. I said, that won't happen. I said, i got to speak a conference tonight in Alabama. I'm scheduled. She goes, well, none of us can change it. You have to go to the top people. And she gave me a number of the top people. So I called the top people. Don't worry, Mr. Bates. We'll take care of you. We can fly you from Cincinnati to Charlotte. You'll get there about 5.30. Your plane will leave at 6.15. I said, it's not going to work. I said, I'm flying to Birmingham. I'm preaching at Tuscaloosa, Alabama. This isn't going to work. But angels... I'm, t I'm telling you this because it was the craziest, weirdest day I ever had. She looked and she said... You know what? There is a seat. I can fly you to Chicago. And you can catch a flight from Chicago to Birmingham and be there by 1230. I said, oh, hallelujah. So I had one set of boarding passes. One set of boarding passes. Then I had two sets of boarding passes. I get to Chicago. Oh, glory to God, am I happy. I'm going to make it to Birmingham. But it was 27 degrees and snow flurries were everywhere and they stopped us on the, on the runway and we sat there for 25 minutes. And I get off and I look at the clock. You've got three minutes to make it to your gate. It's getting ready to shut. I started running and the more I ran... I'm 68 years old. I had to visit the men's room. 
I said, God, have mercy. Have mercy. Have mercy. I don't want to make a mess on that plane. I'm an old man, and I don't want to make no mess on that plane. So I went into the men's room. I came out. I'm running as fast as I can. I can see the door away from me. I see it. Crash. It shuts. I go, oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. I'm up in Chicago. and I'm, uh, so, so I go to the, the first American airline agent. I said, they just shut the door. And I can't, they just shut the door. And he just looks at me. I said, are you going to tell me what to do? And he just looks at me. I said, look, I missed my flight. I've got to get to Birmingham. Can you help? I said, please, can you help me? He said, go to G9. I didn't know where G9 was. I just took off looking for G. That's a good place to start. So I saw G and I kept on running. I got to G9 and the girl was there. And, and, uh, and I, so I, I've, got, I've got two sets of boarding passes already. And so when I get there, uh, I, I, I told her, I said, hey, look, I said, I'm in, a, I'm in really a fix. I said, they just shut the door on my flight. And she goes, oh, you missed it, didn't you? She says, well, we can get you out the first thing in the morning. I said, I can't get out of the first thing in the morning. I got to preach tonight. She's a good black sister. Bless her heart. The black people love preachers. They too. When I, when I go to Starbucks to get me a green tea, I want to make sure the black sisters are in there because when they see it's a preacher, let me tell you what, when I ask for 14 pumps of cane sugar, they put about 15 in it. And they're all the time calling me baby too. Now, she was just plain old, plain old until I said, I passed her church and I got to speak to her. Oh, shoot, baby, we're going to take care of you. <laughs> and she's looked and she says, well, the first flight we can get you on, we can fly you to, we can fly you to uh, Charlotte and you can get on this. And I said, that's not going to work. I said, I got to drive an hour once I get to Birmingham. I said, I, I can't make it. I said, I, I've got to, I've got, I said, I've got to have help. And she said, preacher, you just wait. I'm going to the top on this. Uh, I'm going to the top. I said, isn't there another flight? I said, ma'am, I have money. I've got money. Does anybody care? I've got money. Whatever it costs, I got to get there. I got to preach. I got to be there tonight. She goes back and she talks. She says, well, there's a United flight that leaves and it leaves at 11 o'clock. I'm saying, oh, glory to God. I said, you're going to get there by 1230. I said, oh, glory, glory. And she said, you have to go to the counter. I said, where's the counter? I said, I said, how do I get there? And I said, and I said, wait, before we do this, do you have any idea where my luggage is? She said, baby, you just wait. We're going to find that luggage. About that time, she got on there and she said, huh, your luggage is on its way to Birmingham. It's going to be at Birmingham when you get there. By this time, I realized that there was somebody orking on the other end. I said, angels, 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 angels. Glory to God, glory to God. Oh, bless his name for over, evermore. Way, angels watching over me. And, and then she said, you, got, you can get that United flight. And I looked at her. I said, is there any way? Do you know how to do this? I said, I've got my credit card right here. I don't care how much it costs. And I really didn't at that point. This had been three or $4,000. But I would have sacrificed for that preacher. I would have just worked hard and built it back up. And she said, well, let me look if I can do it. She goes, well, I can do that. And she, I got it all in there. And she says, I got you on it. I about passed out right there. And then I got my credit card out. I said, how much is it? She said, preacher, it's nothing. It's an even exchange. Hallelujah. I want everyone tonight I want you to leave this service with the greatest faith that you are not alone. David, whoo. David, how old are you? You're 40 now? Well, you're getting older than I thought. He's had a heart condition that he didn't even know he had. 
But when you were in there and they split your chest open and they pulled your heart out, you weren't by yourself. You weren't by yourself and you're not by yourself right now. I mean, you give, you've worked your angels hard, brother. I said you have worked them hard and I want everyone in this house to know. I want you to get enough faith that you're not by yourself. That didn't ex exempt me. I could have thrown a fit. The old flesh said it's about time to throw a fit. It's about time to puff up like a bullfrog and say, where is the manager of this airlines of America? But God shut me up. And when I was shut up, angels started working around. Do you know how many boarding passes I ended up with? Eight. But you know what? I got to Alabama. I got to Inglewood Baptist Church. And I'm telling you, when I got on that pen and started singing, the people's eyes got about that big. And then when I started preaching, I never left. I just stood right there. The anointing came up on me. Next thing I know, that, that young preacher, he couldn't take it any longer. It's not on the video because they only put the camera right, right here where you're talking. And that's where it's the only place it is. You don't know what happened. About that time, I mean, I'm preaching. The Holy Ghost gets a hold of me. I'm strongly anointed. And when I get, when, when I'm right in the middle of it, I look and there, that preacher, he takes off running. When he he takes off running. A man over here jumps up and goes, whoa! Another one over here went, glory! Another one over here went, hallelujah! That place just lit up under the power and the fire of God. I'm telling you, God had an assignment. I want you to leave this house tonight. I want everyone watching by internet. I've got angels watching. Let's all stand together. I've got angels watching over me. Well, let's close with this song. Somebody said, aren't you going to have an altar call? We've had an altar call for the last two hours. I s dropped the key about two notes because I've stretched my... Mm -hmm. Oh, that's it, Josh. You sing it. You've got a better voice. You sing it however you got the feeling to do it. And this is going to be our... This will be our closing hymn. All night, all day, angels are watching over me, my Lord. All night, all day, angels watching over me. When I lay me down to sleep, angels are watching over me, my Lord. Sister that anoints people in the hospital. I, I, your name's. Is, uh, where's that little girl? Of yours got that long hair. Bring her up here. Now this is my weakness. <laughs> Come on up here, honey. <laughs> in the old church, the girls weren't allowed to cut their hair or trim it or anything. And I saw her walk up there to praise the Lord. And we used to have several that's hair come below their knees. We also had women had hair on their knees. <laughs> and uh, you think I'm teasing, don't you? They didn't believe in shorn nor shaven. I saw her come up and I said, who knows? You might be the next one to reach your hair to the back of your knees. What do you think about that? You think you can handle it? Just hold on to the Lord, honey. <laughs> Thank you, Lord, for this service. We love you. We magnify you in Jesus' name. Shake hands, be friendly. We give God praise in Jesus' name.
We are so excited about the new sanctuary that's being built right now. And I have just completed my very first project with Jimmy Swaggart Ministries and the first thousand copies, Brother and Sister Swaggart, are letting me be able to offer this and I'm going to do it in honor of them. The very first thousand copies are going to go for the promotion of our new sanctuary. We're gonna be giving you information how that you can be a part of this great, wonderful project to honor Brother and Sister Swaggart and we get to build the new sanctuary also. To join in with Pastor Bates and be one of the 1,000 families to donate at least $100 or more in honor of Brother and Sister Swaggart for the building of the new sanctuary, visit TommyBates.com, text JSM to 859-359-3997, or call 859-356-8851. In appreciation of your gift, we'll send you Pastor Tom's new CD, I'm Getting Back Up. This is a limited time offer, so donate today.